Welcome to Lab 8 for Physics 185. Today's lab is going to look at the motion of the stars in the sky and use that information to help us determine the length of the day and our latitude, our location on our particular planet. The one little problem we have is that if we could track the stars over the entire day, both night hours, dark hours, and light hours, this lab would be really easy. Unfortunately, the sun rises and when the sun is up, we can't really see the stars. And so we're going to have to use some, some techniques to help us determine both the sidereal day, what the length of the day is if we measure it with respect to the stars, and the length of the solar day if we measure it with respect to when the sun appears at a particular point in the sky. And remember, the difference between the solar and sidereal day is due to the fact that the Earth is moving around the sun in its orbit in addition to rotating on its axis. So let's take a look at what we see when we open up virtual astronomy circumpolar stars. You will get a view of the night sky that looks something like this. Um, you see a pattern of constellation. What you'd like to do is you'd like to show the grid to help you keep track of the motion of things in the sky. And then let me go ahead and start the animation and you can see that the stars begin to rotate in the sky. You want to make sure your time exposure is on so that you can actually see the star trails um, that these stars are making on some photographic film. And if we keep talking for a little while, you'll notice that the sky will suddenly begin to get a little bit lighter, indicating the imminent um, approach of sunrise. And now I'm no longer able to see the stars in the sky. I can no longer track their motion and I just simply can't see anything with respect to the stars. I'm going to keep talking for just a little bit more, waiting for sunset to begin, and um, we'll begin to then produce new star trails on the sky, and this will help. We'll talk a little bit about how to make the measurements that you need to make to um, help you understand this lab. Actually, um, rather than just waiting for the sun, let me just stop this. Oh, it came back. Okay. Let me stop the animation so I can talk for just a little bit and explain to you what you're going to see. Um, you notice when we had the star trails, those star trails appeared to be centered around a particular point. So if I begin the animation and turn the time exposure on, these star trails are centered around a particular point in the sky. I'm going to stop the animation now, just so the sun doesn't arise and wreck things for us. Okay. You may remember that the north celestial pole will appear stationary in the sky. Stars will appear to rotate around the north celestial pole. And the altitude of that north celestial pole in the sky is exactly equal to your latitude. So if you're at the north pole, to find the, the north celestial pole, you look straight up at an altitude of 90 degrees. That is your latitude. If you're at the equator, you look along the horizon to find the north celestial pole. It's at zero degrees. That is your latitude. Same applies for any of the intermediate latitudes. So this field of view corresponds to 90 degrees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten lines. So each of these squares corresponds to 9 degrees. To find the latitude, I would say, well, it looks like things are circulating, perhaps around this point right here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, maybe not quite 6. So 6 times 9 gives me 54, maybe just a little bit less than 54. This would give me um, my latitude of about 54 degrees. To figure out the length of the sidereal day, the best thing would be to be in a place where you had 24 hours of darkness and could actually track a star in a full circle in the sky. Unfortunately, we don't have that flexibility. So what you probably would want to do is track one of these star trails and watch it go about a quarter of a way around the circle. So for example, if I can track a star that might start here and goes a quarter way around the circle and ends up here, I could use that, the amount of time it takes to go one quarter of the way around, and multiply that by four to get the time it takes to go the entire way around. 
My suggestion would be that you use as big a circle as possible that keeps the entire circle in the field of view. You may have to run the animation a few times to get a circle that truly represents what you think is the best um, estimate of a quarter of a way around the circle. That will give you the sidereal day. The other thing you're asked to find is the solar day. And to find the solar day, we're going to find the time between two identical points for the sun. Since we can't really track the sun around the sky, what we will do is we will measure the time from sunrise to the next sunrise. So if I start this animation again, and we continue to watch the stars, we know that at some point in time, the sky is going to begin to, to lighten up again. And when the sun lights up, eventually, I will say, okay, now this represents sun, sunrise. And the time would be one day, two hour, and whatever it was uh, a little bit of time ago. And then I continue to wait. The sun, sky will get dark again. And I wait until the sun lights up again, right? That would be the time from sunrise to sunrise. Now, measuring just one day is sometimes very tricky, right? And, and you can make a mistake. And so what I would suggest you do is rather than measure the time from one sunrise to another sunrise, is measure the time maybe for a week from seven sunrises and then find that total time, divide by seven, to get the length of the solar day. To go back to the check your answer screen, the latitude was found by measuring the altitude of the North Celestial Pole, or the point about which the stars appear to be moving. Your rotation period was based on how long it takes the stars to go about a quarter of the way around the sky. That's about the longest you'll get before the sun rises and wrecks your data. And since we use that with respect to the stars, Remember, it's asking for hours and minutes. Both of these boxes need to check. The length from dawn to dawn, that's what you do by measuring a bunch of sunrises, ideally a week, and finding the length of the day by looking at multiple days. Once again, you enter hours and minutes. Both of these should check. And this was looking at the sun, so it would represent the solar day. Um, be very careful in terms of measuring those periods. This can be a little bit of a tricky lab in making sure that you get both the hours and the minutes to check. And so it's very careful that you take your measurements as accurately as possible. Good luck with the lab. If you have any questions, please email me.